Welcome back to our and Daughters. And we're going to have another rant. And this is the last rant video for the evening. Um, this will be the first one I post. And there will be one about ATF uh, on pistol braces. And then there will be just a rant about what's going on in right now. So let's get back to what's going on uh, in gun news. I don't usually do gun news videos. But sometimes I do try to. Um... Glock is coming out with a Picatinny rail, or, or released a rail version of the 43X and 48, if no one's seen that. Um, and it's going to be all black. I think I'll wait for that before, because I'm thinking about getting a 48. Especially if you get the Shield Arms 15-round um, steel magazines, and you got 15 plus 1 capacity, you got 16 and a single-stack mag body. Um, uh, that seems very appealing to me. Um, so I'm gonna wait till we uh, till one of those pop out. What's going? On? What else is going on? Remington's looking to file bankruptcy again. I wonder why. When you continue to put out crap with no quality control, you shut down your DPMS brand, you shut down Bushmaster, and you shut down Tapco, your accessory manufacturer. And then now you're hurting because of COVID-19. And then look where you're at. You're in New York. Governor Cuomo didn't want your damn respirators when he was yelling at Trump for 60,000 respirators because he was killing people when he put them in nursing homes. Doesn't make no damn sense, Remington. You need to be sold and get out hell out of that damn freedom group. No doubt about that. I hear that the Navajo Nation is wanting to buy it. I think that's a great thing. I hope if they're going to continue to sell firearms to the civilian population... Um, that is great. Even if they, even they do move, uh, the factory from New York to New, was it New Mexico? Yeah, I think the Navajos are New Mexico. Into New Mexico, or wherever the Navajo, into the, into the Navajo Nation. I think that's great that America's oldest, think about this now, America's oldest gun manufacturer owned by um, one of America's Native American people. Now, how are the Democrats going to go after a minority-owned gun company at that point in time? Very interesting, isn't it? Um, I, there, I see some real merits there with, for the Navajo to have it. I also see better products coming from Remington. Um, I see the Navajo possibly opening back up their Huntsville plant uh, where DPMS was and Bushmaster and then quality control getting better. Um, Remington, you know, quality control would improve as well because, you know, the Navajos are not stupid people. Uh, by far, they are very intelligent and um, I think they'll do great things with Remington if they own it. Hopefully that goes through and, uh, and it works out. I hate to see people lose their jobs, but hell, after all, you're in New York and you're controlled by New York City who really don't like you or the industry that you're in. So maybe you should move to New Mexico or move to a uh, pro-gun state. Now, I know people don't uh, people hear that all the time. I'm sorry. If the state that I live in ever turns blue and an anti-gun, uh, Rick's getting the hell out of Dodge. Um, especially if I can't, but then well, people stay and fight. Well, how are you going to fight in California when you're completely, when, let's face it, in California, anybody who goes out and puts a D behind their name, you could use a bowl of shit with a D behind it, running against a Republican candidate in California, the people in California will vote for that bowl of shit. That's, I mean, it's funny, but it's true, and we all know it. And they'll always win. Doesn't matter what the hell you've done, what you've done positive. But if you got a D behind that name, they're going to vote for you. And that's a sad fact. Look at that. you got all these people voting for Joe Biden, and that man has dementia. And that's not funny. His gaffes and all that, you know, the creepy crap that he does, that he d did in the past, that he still does. I don't know what campaign that was where you put that woman's, try to bite that woman's finger. That's not mature. I mean, that's something you do behind doors and you just want to goof around. 
But out there in the public like that, the man is not right in the head. Um, and it's wrong and it's terrible that the Democrats are putting that man up the run. One thing, for, for instance, it's going to be these debates that are coming up between him and, and Trump are going to be entertaining as hell. Um, because as soon as Trump figure out whatever triggers him, which won't be too, it won't be too long before he figures out the trigger words for Joe that puts him into these gaffes or triggers his mind and, and say odd shit. He's going to kill him. He's going to, he will literally destroy himself in debates and everybody knows it. Even if you give him the questions that they're going to be asked to him, all Trump has to do is interrupt him, say something to get him riled up, and then Joe's gone. He'll be gone. It'll be hilarious and sad, and, and, and I, I'm just ashamed of the Democratic Party for putting that man up. Let's get back to Colt. Get off on a rant there. That's what they call these rants, right? So uh, maybe Remington will get to go to the Navajo Nation, and we'll get some good uh, TAPCO and DPMS and Bushmaster Remington uh, products again, like back in the old days when they made quality stuff. And I hope that happens. Um, and I hope it's, it works out for the Navajo people. Next thing is, guess who's selling ARs again? Colt. Hi, we're Colt. We got our Prancing Pony brand back, and we're going to sell them to you poor civilian slobs. After we said again, you know, a second time in our history that we said we weren't going to sell them no more. Now, why did Colt decide to sell ARs to the civilians again? That's because Remington isn't, Bushmaster isn't, and DPMS are all out of the market from selling ARs right now. Colt has made millions of these AR-15s. They ha maybe their government contract ended. They, you know, they had a government contract, and that's what they was focusing on. Maybe that contract's over with now. Now we can sell all these leftover parts. We'll just assemble them and sell them as AR-15s out on the market. And we'll still sell them at $1,400, $1,500 for a base rifle with no damn features that should be selling for 600 bucks. Some people are going to disagree with that statement. If they do, just say you disagree. Because a featureless rifle, or when I call when I say featureless rifle, I mean a base rifle, just because it has Colts stamped on it, is not worth twelve or fifteen hundred dollars by no means whatsoever. When you could buy PSA or you could build you a PSA or assembly you one from Anderson or the other 1,500 companies that make AR-15 parts, I got a ton of videos on builds from different manufacturers and different lowers and uppers and all that. And you could come in and build your gun for under $500. You can build you a um, specialty gun, a colored gun, um, a theme gun like I build for eight, nine hundred dollars and have all kinds of uh, features on it that you'd like, or you can spend three hundred dollars more and buy you a twelve hundred dollar Colt just because it says Colt on it and ha and have nothing worthwhile that you want on it, and then spend more money to improve it. So, why is Colt? What was the decision to, for Colt to make for them to sell AR-15s back in the market? Because people will pay. Fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars for a rifle now. Is it because competition has died off? Is it because they need money? Will they stop selling to the public again? Guarantee it. They've already done it twice. What's Colt's real problem here? They're stagnant on development. Their new their new revolvers are overpriced. Their 1911s are overpriced. You don't sell enough cowboy gun peacemakers to stay in business. Your AR-15s are stuck in the 80s. You need to do something about your lineup. Quote, revamp it. 
put out quality weapons, come up with some innovations, and keep your price points competitive. If you want to sell a base rifle, sell it for 600 bucks. You'll sell a lot more of them because, you know, if you're going to sell a base coat for $600, I'd buy a base model coat for $600 and spend two or $300 to uh, put all the stuff I want on it. But I'm not going to spend $1,400 for a base rifle and then have to spend another $300 on accessories to get it where I want and still just have a base rifle with a $600 price and $500 in them accessories on it. Because you know what we call that? When you take a turd and you polish it, you still just got a polished turd. And it ain't worth no more. Let's see you come up with some innovations. Let's see you come up with uh, some of the older designs. Lower your price point is very, very important, Colt. Price your stuff to be competitive in the market. Make sure your stuff is in... If you're not going to be innovative in your designs or come out with new stuff and you're going to make the old stuff, the same old stuff that you've made for the last 60 years, drop your price points. Put those, put more 1911s in people's hands. My God, you got Taurus in them and Ruger all making ARs and 1911s at six, five and six hundred dollars. There's no reason why you can't make match that and make quality. People like the Colt name. You're not you're not marketing right. I know the guy over at Small Arms Solutions used to work for you. You might want to hire him back. He knows what your popular models were and what they were selling and why y'all wouldn't do this. Come up with a polymer gun. Come up with a Glock killer. I would like I would buy a 45 ACP polymer pistol from Colt if you came up with a good design. I would like to buy a 380 polymer pistol if you came up with a good design. I like the 1903 and 1908 Colt models. I like the baby browning. Come up one with titanium. Come up one in 32 ACB. Come up with one come up with a new gun or a 1911 in 5.7 if you can. Come up with a AR-15 in 5.7 with a good price point. People will be on it like flies on shit. Listen to the people. You're not Glock. Glock's gonna have the same problem later on down the road. We all know how Glock is. They give you what you want three years after you wanted it. But they're willing to change slowly over time. And they improve their designs. Yes, I know the 1911 Series 80 is better than the 1911 Series 70. I know the A1s are better than the 1911s. I know the A5, AR-15 has improved over the years. That's not what I'm saying. You need to come up with innovative new designs. Make a gas piston AR. That'd be neat. I know you got the... I've seen them. I've seen them in the museums that you got. You have a lot of good ideas. Come out with a 9mm 1911. Come out with a 19, 20, 2011. Um, but fix your price points, Colt. And I'm sorry, until you do that and come up with something innovative, new designs, new ideas, and better price points, Colt, I wouldn't, you're not getting my money. I'm sorry. I don't trust you. I think you... Tell me why Colt's back in the market. Is it because Remington, DPMS, and Bushmaster are all gone pretty much right now? They come back in here. That's the first choice. Second choice is they see where they where they won't be price gouging if they charge $1,500 for a base rifle because people will buy them at that price now. Or did they, or did, or number three, their military contracts ended and they, need, and they got all these parts left over and they're going to sell them on the civilian markets. Or four, they're only going to sell for a little bit and then stop again. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think Colt should do to become profitable and, and innovative again. Tell me what you think of Colt. It's a shame. I like to see Colt strong. I like to see Remington strong. I like to see Bushmaster and 
DPMS strong as well because when we got lots of competition in the gun markets, prices are down, we the people have better choices and better firearms to pick from. Better price points means more gun sell, even in the bad times. And this is a good time right now if you're selling firearms and ammo. But what happens if Joe Biden wins in November? What happens if Trump becomes anti-gun if he wins in November afterwards? I guess we'll want to impeach him. Are we going to stand by and let more Democrats come in and do the crazy crap are they going to do? I don't know. Point is, if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. If you don't like it, give us a thumbs down. I don't care. Um, you, it means you viewed and you disappoint. If you disagree with any things I said, leave. let's have a discussion in the comments below. Um, if you think Colt's just playing for some quick cash, let me know. Why is Colt back in the market again for the civilians? Don't you think the uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. You get no more of my money, Colt. Nope. You're going to have to prove something to me before you get any money. Kind of like Springfield Armory. They'll never get any money from me until they're under new ownership because their owners are just shitheads. Anyway, I want to thank you all for watching the video. Thank you all for all the new subscribers. And without you guys watching, I probably still make videos, but no one would watch them, I guess. Anyway, thanks for stopping by and, and listening to me ramble on. And uh, we'll catch you next time. And remember, it costs nothing to be nice to one another. And we'll see you then.